What's going on everybody? Halo Drama here yet again with another Rewind Rumble Reaction video. Let's see what we got today. Jason Voorhees versus Michael Meidel. <laughs> Michael Myers. Total War. Halloween Free For All. So is it just Jason versus Michael? Or is it a free... I don't fucking know. Um, but I, yeah, I guess we're on some horror movie themed shit. Maybe I should have saved this for Halloween, but... Anyway, let's see what we got. Everyone loves a good horror film. Oh, well, shit. maybe not everyone, but... Hold on now. See, we got Ash, Freddy, Alien, Jason, Slenderman, Michael Myers, Pinhead, I think. I think that's who that is. And Predator. I'm not sure if Predator was a horror movie, but I'm sure it scared some people. That Michael Myers, I know that, um, I know that Sprite from somewhere. <clears throat> I just can't think of it. I think it's from a King of Fighters game. There definitely is an audience for it. From slashers to monsters, aliens to predators, and Freddy's even a creepy Sprite topic is from a King of Fighters has made it onto the mainstream big screen. While these types of characters share many similarities, they all have something unique and special about them. Who are they missing? What do you guys think? The crowd of horror Chucky? antagonists. But which it's of these small. four icons will survive the night? Hmm. Today, we find that out. Today, we rewind Rumble. Is that a fucking Candyman? Shit. I still won't say that dude's name in the mirror three times. I don't give a fuck. Judge me. This horror free-for-all consists of eight different horror characters. These include Freddy Krueger, the Xenomorph Queen, Pinhead, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, the Predator, Ash Williams, and Slenderman. Now, before anyone says Guess that right Slenderman on those, isn't a horror on all movie those guesses. character, don't forget that dreadful Slenderman movie that came out back in August of 2018. As such, we will only be using feats from the movie and not the collection of creepypasta documents or games. With all that in mind, let's break down each member. Jason Voorhees was born in the small town of Crystal Lake on June 13, 1946 to Elias and Pamela Voorhees. Jason was afflicted with severe facial deformities, an abnormally large head, and mental disabilities. Jason's mass murders began in the summer of 1984 when he learned of a new group of teenagers occupying the nearby picnic lodge. Determined to destroy the trespassers, he began to watch the group closely and stalk them to their death. Jason is very tough to put down as he survived gunshots and stab wounds with ease. Even hanging him isn't enough to keep him down for good. He is very skilled at using his machete, and he's strong enough to rip off people's limbs and decapitate his foes with a Jason's single punch. A revenant, he's Next up, be. we have Michael Myers. As a six-year-old child, Michael was admitted into a psychiatric hospital for murdering My, his yeah, older Michael's sister, Judith be a Myers. Also. After nearly 15 years of captivity, Myers broke out of the asylum and for 23 years hunts down the rest of his family to kill them. On top of his superhuman strength and expertise in the art of killing, Michael is not one who would be accepted into hell, making him technically immortal. He's lifted entire tombstones, stabbed through many people before, and his body count is up there in the 80s. Moving on, we have Freddy Krueger. Frederick Charles Krueger was essentially born in an insane asylum. His mother and was a nun who walked like the that. asylum, taking care of the patients. <laughs> As an adult, Freddy had raised a daughter with his loving wife. However, behind <clears> that <throat> peaceful facade was a horrific desire for vengeance for all the abuse Six and bullying to that took feet, place oh, during his childhood. So Maybe at his best in the dream world, which this battle will not be including, he's still a powerful force in his own right. He's able to kill people with ease, and his skeleton alone took on two grown men with shotguns. He's even held his own against Jason in the past, though his biggest flaw is his fear of fire. And now for Movie Slenderman, and the scariest oh, thing not, about Movie Slenderman might actually his be his dream powers, powers, tomato he's score. Lose. And now that I think Fine. about it, Movie Slenderman might not actually be a horror film character. He just might be a horrible film character. Get it? Uh, all right, I'll move on. But to wow. be fair, it's not like Ooh, Creepypasta Slenderman was a developed character to begin with. Anyway, Movie Slenderman is very similar to Creepypasta Slenderman with his ability to teleport, and at the beginning of the film we see him easily toppling a tree, and he can use his tentacles to lift and suffocate humans, though he hasn't shown any impressive durability feats, but he is described to be made out of bioelectricity in the film, something unique to the film. Next, we have the Xenomorph Queen. In every hive, the queen is the largest and most oh, intelligent shit, uh, female. Uh, at roughly 20 yeah, feet the tall, queen. the queen is tasked with regulating 
training the Xenomorph Hive. She has the ability to launch acid, has enhanced senses, and regeneration. The Queen can easily survive many rounds of gunfire and has impressive strength. After describing the alien, it's only natural to bring up the Predator. The yeah. Yajua Predator is technically sense. an alien too, as the species originates from a planet known as Yachua Prime. The Predators Yachua. are an extraterrestrial race of warriors and hunters who travel the galaxy seeking dangerous quarries to hunt for sport and honor. While they do live in nomadic tribes, they are a highly advanced race and possess dangerous technology to help with their efforts. Their common arsenal includes the likes of a combi stick, net gun, plasma caster, and smart disc. Moving on, we have Ash Williams. Before all the madness, Legend. Ash Williams was just your average S-Mart employee and casual lady. Ash needs to be put in the Mortal Kombat game. friends took a small vacation to an abandoned cabin in the woods. Yup, it's the abandoned cabin cliche. We all know where this is going. Ash was confronted by a recorded incantation that released demonic spirits. I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen friends. any of the Evil Dead movies, but they're hilarious. Ash to kill everyone he loves with various cabin equipment. They're just so over the top for his no reason. His most iconic weapon, of course, is his chainsaw and boom boomstick gun. And yeah. last but not least, we have Pinhead. Who you calling Pinhead? Who are we calling Pinhead? Well, Elliot Spencer, that's who. Elliot at first was just a I normal human soldier, and suddenly in a out of the blue, time. he was abducted by an extra-dimensional order of demons known as the Cenobites. Soon after, he became leader of these demons and was known as Pinhead. His abilities include electric manipulation, element manipulation, teleportation, and size manipulation. His greatest strength is also his greatest weakness, which is the Lamet configuration box. He can use it to manipulate the world around him, or it can be used to destroy him by reverting him back to human form. And now... Yeah. Let's get ready for this the should be fight. Interesting. This battle will take place on Earth, and remember, We're... there is no prep time. Yeah, I know the speech. Um, it's where I almost want to say the Alien Queen, but I feel like that's, I feel like that's almost too obvious, because the bitch is huge and it's hard as fuck to kill that bitch. Jason, Michael, yeah, like I said, they're, they're both generally. Fucking immortal re uh, revenants. I don't know. I don't know who to pick. I, like I said, I want to say the alien queen, but I feel like that's too much of a give, too much of a given, at least in my head. But we'll see what happens. Once that circumstance bar has finally loaded, it's time to rewind rumble. Jason is that? <laughs> Ash is awesome, but he, he is still just human, so I definitely don't see him winning this. Yeah. 
He'll put up a fight, but he's not going to win. If he does, that's just crazy. Bitch, this ain't over. I wonder why they just didn't go with a traditional Jason type sprite. If it was a traditional Jason sprite and they were going over their stats and stuff. I don't know, it's just weird. Or maybe this is just a version of Jason that I don't know. If y'all know who this is, if y'all know what version that is, let me know. You know, I already forgot about this dude. Then, then, like I said, I don't know anything about Slender. That is from King of Fighters. Oh, uh, what is that dude's name? Yeah, with the cards. I can't remember his name, but yeah, he's definitely from King of Fighters. I thought I recognized that sprite in his stance. Older looking white dude with gray hair and glasses. Yeah, he uses cards. Almost almost gambit style, except they don't explode. They're just sharp as fuck. Excuse me. Actually makes perfect sense. I thought I seen him yeah, activate that thing and I was like, well, the fucking alien and predator aren't gonna fucking win, but yeah, they I guess they were all fighting at the same spot and then they then Freddie and Ash teleported to them and then it was just a wrap, but yeah, you can't kill Jason like that. I don't think you can kill Michael Myers like that either, but Yeah, if they gave it to Jason, they gave it to Jason. And that actually yeah, that actually makes sense. Hopefully you enjoyed that animation. See what his post analysis says. Rewinds, Gabriel M. Yeah, I know I it's, like it's going to boil down to him being MLG generally immortal. For helping out with the research slash notes. Thanks and enjoy the post analysis. Oh, for those that don't know, when I say revenant, it basically it just means it's a fucking zombie. I'm not exactly sure how scary sprite animations can be, but I do know how scary post-analysis Flame Wars could be, which makes it now to <laughs> the scariest part of the video. The Flame War response to Jason Voorhees winning. The three biggest that's, things that you... That's because he does so many videos where he gets his facts wrong, so I'm sure they go in the comment section and eat his ass up. I'm one of those people, so I, I, I know that shit happens. What you need to understand is that circumstance, location, and incarnation played a huge role in Jason's victory. While pretty much every character on this roster has some sort of no limits fallacy demon resurrecting hacks that could make this battle pretty much endless, a battle winner would have to be chosen on who can survive the longest without dying or decapitating at least once. And to be fair, the Xenomorph Queen and the Predator probably have the best stats and arsenal among everyone on this roster. Faster. But remember, this is a free-for-all. Let me put it like this. If we threw everyone into a cage, the Xenomorph Queen and the Predator will most likely, if not certainly, choose to fight each other immediately. They have a That's, nasty yeah. rivalry and a natural connection to hate each other and fight each other the most. This is important to understand because in such a battle, one of them is going to die and whoever walks out alive is going to be extremely battered as it is a close fight. Spoiler alert, but in the movie, they were both kind of even and in the last battle, while the alien queen may have ended up drowning and dead, we don't see her die on screen, but it might have been implied. And both creatures are very close in stats, to the point where after they naturally go for each other's throats, it doesn't matter who comes out alive because the survivor is close to death anyway. Jason, Michael, and Freddy are naturally going to go after each other right away as well. Jason has a clear advantage over Freddy since Freddy won't have access to the dream world. Myers may be the embodiment of evil, but there's still something very 
very human so you're saying that you Freddy can that teleport people in the real world? Himself, is this something that, cautiously and that I just don't for remember? Hours at a time, he's clearly still a human, although one possessed by evil. Jason is a wild savage. He charges into everything and fights brutally. He would just rip buyers apart. He's also much more resistant to injury, so my yeah. usual tricks really wouldn't work. He could take Meyer's knife or girding wire and just keep tricking him. Jason essentially has a first class demon attached to his soul, this being why it's so easy for him to resurrect again and again and again and again. This being the case, stabbing him, punching him, crushing him, none of it will matter in regards to Jason versus Michael. And I need to make it clear that regenerating while still alive is different than dying and resurrecting. Thus, Jason will over for power Myers, and let's not forget Jason was strong enough to literally punch someone's head off. This leaves us with Jason, movie Slenderman, Pinhead, and well, Ash Williams. The script Ash told Williams, him to do while that, has though. shown superhuman feats of speed, dodging bullets, and his durability is wall level, which is crazy for a human, he lacks the regeneration hacks that most of his competition on this roster has. Movie Slenderman has no evidence of being more durable than Creepypasta Slenderman, and if that's any indicator, you know he's not gonna last long, as he has far worse feats compared to his creepypasta counterpart. And that leaves us with Jason versus Pinhead. Pinhead is going to be Jason's biggest competition, and this is a super close call between Pinhead and Jason for that number one crown. Pinhead in the original Hellbound Hearts book can be argued as planet level, but in the movies his stats are fairly close to Jason's. What separates Pinhead from Jason is that Pinhead can revert back down to his human form. All it really takes is for Jason to take the land configuration box from Pinhead and use it against him. Solving yeah, the box isn't exactly a matter of educational is that what happened though? I didn't see that happen in the video. Did you guys see that happen in the video? I don't think you did. Power. I do believe that the He's always talking about Jason some what if scenarios. Quite well on its own. While they are from different universes, so the uh, layering oh well. and leveling of dimensional demons is not consistent. If a normal human like Elliot can do it with some conditioning, Jason should be fine with handling it in my opinion. Physically taking the box from Pinhead will be a challenge, but it won't be impossible, especially since it'll be tough to multitask hiding the box and blocking attacks at the same time. Once Pinhead becomes Elliot again, Jason is essentially victorious, making the winner of this rumble, Jason Voorhees. Now, hopefully you did it. I'll just stop you right there. But, yeah, I guess in the end, I could definitely see why Jason won. You just can't kill that motherfucker. But all these what-if scenarios and... Uh, okay, it, like I said, he's always coming up with these what-if scenarios. Shit that didn't happen in the fucking video. Like, okay... You explained how it would play out, so why wasn't it animated to play out that way? That, I don't know, that just makes sense to me. I'm not an animator, though. That shit might be rough. But, yeah, if, always the what-if scenarios. Explain the shit how the shit happened. Rather than explain, well, if this happened, this would happen, and this would happen, this is how this would turn out. But none of that happened in the video. But, in any event, I can still see why Jason won, even after that bomb went off. Um... Because, yeah, Jason, he, he fucking tanks shit. Being stabbed, being shot, motherfuckers still murdering motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? But, alright, on to the next time when I have time. I hope you guys like that. Till then, peace.